you studying for your ATPL exams? Do you need a little bit of help with mass and balance? If so, you've come to the right place to help with this technical little subject. Hi, I'm Grant. I'm a first officer based here in the UK for a major UK airline. I've been flying jets for five years with two different airlines and I'm here to guide you through mass and balance in a plane an easy to understand format with some real world examples from my own experiences. In this first class, we're gonna be covering the unit conversions that come up all the time in Mass and Balance and help lay our foundations for the rest of the course. Okay, so starting first, we have our conversions. Now, very annoyingly, there are two sets of units in aviation, imperial and metric. Unfortunately, they are used interchangeably. So we need to understand some basic conversions for distance, mass and volume. So the conversions are standardized by ICAO, which is the International Civil Aviation Organization. And that is all laid out in a document called Annex 5, which is a very, very interesting document. The easiest to understand, is distance and in mass and balance specifically the distances are usually quite small so we deal with meters and feet so one meter equals 3.28 feet and if we want to go from one to the other we either divide or multiply by 3.28 for example 25 meters. If we wanted to get that into feet, we would multiply by 3.28 and come up with a value of 82 feet. This is a good point to do an error check. We know that feet are the smaller of the distances because there are 3.28 of them in every meter. So therefore, there should be more feet than there are meters. That means we have to multiply we get 82. Simple. The next unit to talk about is mass. For every kilogram, we have 2.205 pounds. So if we want to get from kilos to pounds, we multiply by 2.205 and pounds to kilos, we do the inverse. So for example, 200 pounds, what does that equal in kilograms? We know that kilograms are the larger of the two because there are 2.205 pounds in every kilogram. Therefore, there should be fewer kilograms than there are pounds. And that means we divide. So do we divide by 2.205 and we come up with an answer of 90. 0.703 kgs. So we've done that error check already in our calculation. We know that kilos are the larger, so there should be fewer of them than pounds. Now, something important to touch on is the concept of weight versus mass. If you've done physics in school or anything like that, you'll know that weight is technically a force, so it's measured in newtons. But if somebody asks you how much you weigh, you don't say, I weigh 150 newtons. You realistically talk about, I weigh 90 kgs or 200 pounds. So the same logic applies in aviation. Most of the time, they're used interchangeably. But there can be some cases where things will be given as forces uh, and other things will be given in in mass and you have to convert them all into the same either force or mass equivalent. Now this is a very easy thing to do. We just use the G constant which stands for the acceleration due to gravity and in aviation we use the figure 9.81 meters per second squared. So if we have a weight of 150 kgs sorry, a mass of 150 kgs, and we want to know the weight. We multiply by 
9.81 and come up with that answer. 1471.5 meters. Next unit of measurement to talk about is volume. Volume is measured in three ways in aviation. We have liters, imperial gallons, and US gallons. So, an imperial gallon is equal to 4.564 liters, and a US gallon is equal to 3.78 five liters. Those are the two conversions that we need and if we want to convert from US gallons to imperial gallons we'll convert to liters first and then come back from liters into the appropriate um, gallon. So if we do one of those examples I'll show you how it works. If we have five US gallons and we want to know what it is in imperial gallons. First of all, we go to liters. We know that there are more liters, so we need to have more than five. Therefore, we must multiply. So times by 3.785, come up with an answer in liters, which is 18.925. That's our midpoint. And then we want to go back to imperial gallons we know there are going to be fewer imperial gallons as they are bigger than liters, therefore we have to divide. So I take that 18.925, divide it by our conversion, which is 4.564, and we come up with an answer, which is 4.147 imperial gallons. To summarize, one meter equals 3.28 feet, one kilogram equals 2.205 pounds, one imperial gallon is equal to 4.564 liters, and one US gallon is equal to 3.785 litres. <laughs>